Uh, my name is Simon Hurd. I'm a senior recruitment consultant with RBC. I support Atlantic Canada uh, for all our staffing and recruitment and our talent funnel pipeline needs, and that's from uh, the Canadian banking perspective. So our branch network, everything from the casual CSR up to the branch manager, our commercial banking network, our mobile career sales force, executive roles, one-off roles like credit risk analysts and uh, senior vice president, things like that. Uh, so I do a lot of uh, networking, sourcing, and recruiting, talk to a lot of people. And just to further Chris's point, uh, if you're not on LinkedIn and you are searching for a job, I can't stress enough how great a tool LinkedIn is, uh, further to the, the Facebook and the Twitter. Uh, we do use Facebook when we, I, I think the term is creeping, uh, <laughs> candidates to see, uh, you know, if, what their professional, what they're like outside of their professional environment, and we've made some decisions based on what we've seen. Uh, Twitter, we kind of use, uh, if I post a job, I may go to Twitter and say, you know, have a look at our website if I need a branch manager in Trinity Newfoundland or whatever, just to, to capture some people, you never know, passive candidates, uh, it's a great way to capture them. But LinkedIn is a huge tool for us. We post everything on our website internally and externally on rbc.com, Career Beacon and Workopolis, but LinkedIn does a sweep of our, uh, our network every night and posts all our jobs online as well for us. So it's, and we're not the only employer that does that, so it's a huge tool and it's a great tool for job search, but also just to develop a network. But that's not why I'm here, so I just figured <laughs> I'd, uh, I'd uh, stress the importance of what Chris was saying. Uh, I've been with the bank for 18 years. I started out part-time with the bank, and uh, just through the development and opportunity that it gave me, I quit my full-time day job because I liked what the bank had to offer. Uh, I've been uh, bleeding royal blue ever since, and any chance I get to... Uh, Preach RBC, I do so uh, with passion and pride. Um, and one of the reasons is because of uh, situations like this. Uh, by no means do I think that RBC has it perfect and that we don't have room to grow, but uh, we definitely uh, have come a long way when it comes to inclusion of persons with disabilities. My presentation today is, is actually, the, the, the individual that usually does this presentation, his name is Jeff Woodworth, and he's, uh, he's the manager of financial planning for our Southwest Nova market. Uh, and he's uh, chair of, our, our, of the REACH, which I'll talk about here, which is an internal mentorship program for persons with disabilities. And so he, unfortunately, was booked today, and we've done some things together, so he reached out and asked if I could do this. So I jumped at the opportunity, but you'll have to bear with me because uh, the presentation isn't one that I'm 100% familiar with, so if I look like I'm fumbling, just uh, have some patience. So. Uh, what I wanted to talk about is RBC, the commitment that RBC has to diversity, um, what it looks like for an applicant uh, uh, when they, a person with a disability who's applying to a role with RBC and what, what we can do. And then once, once you do become an employee of RBC, what it means for our workplace accommodation and inclusion in the workplace. It's very quick and hopefully more will come out of questions and answers. To start, uh, these two individuals here, the first one, I don't know if everybody is familiar, but that's Gordon Nixon, who is the Grand Poobah of RBC, uh, the President and CEO. Uh, Mr. Nixon sits on two boards by choice. Well, I'm sorry, two boards. One he has to, and that's the operations or operating committee. It, uh, for, all, for obvious reasons, it's the one that makes all the, the key decisions for RBC and direction and strategy and growth. And the other one is the Diversity Council. And that is one he uh, sits on by choice. Uh, you can read his comment there, and I'm going to go through it again. I'm not going to read it, it's up on the board. But uh, he firmly believes in the value of diversity in the workforce. Uh, if you ever hear him speak or read anything that he has, 99.9% .9 of the time, there is a, a, he could be speaking on mutual fund growth, and there's always a portion that's related to diversity. He brings it in wherever he goes and whatever he talks about, because he is so passionate about it. And the second individual is Zabine Herji, and Zabine is the Chief Human Resources Officer for RBC Global. Uh, my boss's boss's boss reports into Zabine, Zabine reports into Gordon Nixon, so uh, she is uh, responsible for all the HR direction of RBC across, across international, and that's in 56 countries with 78,000 employees. So uh, again, you can read, uh, she, she recognizes the value of diversity in the workforce as well. 
our vision is always earning the right to be our client's first choice. Uh, and, and, and that comes in many ways, in many forms. Obviously, we want to try and present <coughs> strong packages and strong products and services and, and put our best foot forward in that respect. But it's also about uh, creating a non-obtrusive and inclusive uh, environment for a client to come into that they don't feel that there's any barriers in their way. And, and we've, we're, you know, we're still working through some kinks there, but it's, uh, it's all part and parcel. Uh, one of our key values is the diversity for growth and innovation. And, and as we grow as individuals and as the organization grows, obviously the communities grow, there's similarities and differences, and we are constantly, I guess you can say, recreating the wheel to make sure that we are in line with the, with the needs externally. We have three main objectives, and that's to be the recognized leader in workforce diversity. And I speak diversity, we're here for persons with disabilities, which is obviously a huge part of the somebody who comes from a diverse background, it's also other, other uh, avenues of diversity as well. Uh, we want to be the financial institution of choice for diverse clients, and we want to leverage diversity for the growth of RBC and the success of the clients and the communities we serve. So uh, further to the point of reflecting the demographics and the needs of those demographics, it's important to us that we make sure we do that. And our three main priorities for the diversity blueprint, which was a three-year initiative, that was set forth by the Diversity Council that Mr. Nixon sat on was talent in the workplace, increasing the diversity and inclusion of our workforce globally. Uh, in the marketplace, we wanted to make sure that we offer customized and accessible services and products to diverse client markets and support supplier diversity programs in North America. And in the community, we want to support the economic and social development of our communities through leadership in research, strategic partnerships, donations, and sponsorships. And I'm not going to get into the uh, community involvement in donation and sponsorship uh, uh, piece because it's it's on the website. It's massive as far as uh, the, the number of dollars and the number of time and energy that is put into it with RBC. Again, we can always do more and I think we recognize that as well. When an individual is interested in uh, applying to a role at RBC, and can, I'm standing far back. Everybody can hear me, I assume, right? Okay. Uh, one of the first things that I encourage anybody to do is, A, you visit our website. Uh, you know, not, I don't know many employers now that don't do online employment application and, and processing. So it is the way of, uh, way of the world now. So you visit royalbank.com backslash careers. If you are a person with a disability, we have a program called Pursue Your Potential, which is right there on the website. It brings you to the link. It lets you self-identify and gives you some uh, key, I don't want to say advantages, but key, key things that are brought forward for you to help level the playing field, I guess is a good way to put it. So what happens is when you uh, apply to pursue your potential, you will 100% of the time get contacted by a diversity recruitment coordinator out of Toronto, I believe they are. They will contact you pre-screen more than likely go through a 20-minute interview with you to talk about potentially what, you're, what you identified as your disability. Uh, and, but then through a little bit of a behavioral resume review interview. If they like what they've heard and think that you uh, fit the skills and abilities and, and, and bring forward what we're looking for, they contact me and my colleague, or if you're in Toronto, wherever, they contact the local recruitment consultants and we will then conduct a more full-blown uh, assessment process through psychometric testing, which is just an online, kind of like a personality survey, and a, a, a telephone interview of 45 to an hour in length. Or if the need arises and, and, and a telephone interview can't, can't do for the individual, we will certainly do face-to-face -face interviews as well. Pursue your potential guarantees you contact with the diversity recruitment coordinator. Uh, ensures that any needs that are, are uh, needed for an individual, if they are to A, have a telephone interview or come in, that there's any accommodations that are needed, that we make sure that we can do it or we can bring it to a location that that, uh, that accessibility is already, already there. Uh, and they also follow up with me a week or so later to make sure that I've done my part in contacting the person that they put forward to me and given uh, proper and, and uh, uh, professional feedback as well. 
Um, since 2007, we've uh, had 430 candidates hired through this program alone. Uh, and uh, we're hoping, we, we, to be honest, we'd like to double that number. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it, it was in its, I guess, its infancy five or six years ago. It's only gotten better over, over the last few years. Uh, the diversity recruitment coordinator will also provide assistance through uh, uh, applying successfully to the position through the accessible careers at rbc.com connection and contact. So this is what the website looks like. Just a, a, a quick, um, if you go to rbc.com backslash careers, you can see there. So you can filter it with the job and career profile. That's right there for anybody. Uh, the link for the two years is right there. The email, email, recognizing who you are for the individual. And you should get contact. My understanding is within 24 hours. There's quite a few other things on there that, we, that can help you uh, in your job search and, and uh, programs and activities and, and uh, items that may be available to you as well. Okay, wonderful. If you are hired, or even before you're hired, uh, whenever I do an interview with an individual, one of the questions I ask is about. Uh, diversity, uh, and, and in particular persons with disabilities, and I introduce the PYP program to them if they identify to me. The reason I ask is because if I like you, and you have gone through this process but just been a regular applicant, I need to know in case when we bring you in for a face-to-face -face that I have to make sure that it's a, 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 a facility that can accommodate you. If you, you know, we, we un had a few unfortunate incidents. We learned by our mistakes. We had a individual who was to show up for a, an interview in a branch. Um, this is three or four years ago. The question was never asked about, uh, you know, whether he needed any kind of accommodation or anything to help him through the recruitment process. And uh, his interview was at 9.30 when the branch opened. And around quarter 10 to 10, the branch manager said she came out looking, you know, there was nobody waiting in the lobby, only to see there was an individual outside of the lobby, outside the glass doors in a wheelchair the doors weren't wheelchair accessible. So, and they, they couldn't reach the bell that we have to open the door. So they were there 15 minutes uh, late for an interview. But we learned by that. There, there was an automatic, the, the push button door was installed within a day and the doorbell was lowered. And, you know, the shame on the recruiter that didn't ask the question because it's something that we recognize the importance to do. So, so not only do we try and accommodate once we hire you, but if we can make things easier through a recruitment process to level that playing field, we're going to do our utmost as well. When you are hired, you do have workplace accommodations. Uh, uh, each branch has a pretty hefty budget when it comes to that. I mean, when I was a manager in Dartmouth, I had to, I had to reconstruct a whole workspace for an individual. Normally, the wickets are about this wide. Uh, so they can stand there or, or slide the chair in. She needed a wider and higher chair, so I had to completely re have that reconstructed. It wasn't a cheap process, but there was no question asked, no eyebrow raised. It was just done because it was the right thing to do. There was a branch in Port Hawkesbury who the bathroom was downstairs, uh, which is, uh, for, for a lot of people, it's just not a good situation. So they made, they actually, what they first did was they made an accommodation uh, and switched her. She was kind of in the middle of two branches, so they switched her with another employee so that she could have a branch where the bathroom was on the same level, but then they made an accommodation with a chairlift or an elevator, I'm not sure which one, to accommodate her to the, the branch that she was hired for. Some of those are extreme, but if it's the right thing to do, we're going to do it. I mentioned about uh, Jeff Woodworth, who normally does this presentation. He's the chairman of REACH, which is a mentorship program. So if you are hired into RBC, we have many employee resource groups for, you know, for all different diverse groups, REACH being one of them. So it brings together a mentor and a mentee to help them through their uh, experiences and educate them on RBC and, and, and make sure, because sometimes people are afraid to bring forward things because they, they think it's complaining or they don't want to be a nuisance or whatever. But if you can be which is furthest thing from the truth. But if you can be paired up with somebody who shares similar experiences and knows exactly what you're doing and, and can help you through the process, it's, it proves to be a wonderful experience and, and helps to keep our, what we hope are long-tenured employees. 
So REACH uh, was officially launched in 2007. It's uh, chaired by an executive chance, champion, Al Tinney, who is a senior vice president with us. And uh, each, uh, each market has its local chair, as I said, Jeff Woodward here. Uh, so we want to, uh, the objectives this year were to contribute to a positive work environment for employees with disabilities, strongly promote Let's Talk About It communication campaign, which is, uh, uh, I don't think I have the slide, but it's a, an internal campaign for, for RBC employees where they can share their experiences, bring up suggestions, uh, seek out other individuals who maybe have like uh, situations to theirs and things like that. Uh, you can participate in networking, peer support, and sharing of best practices with members of REACH who are located in multiple business functions across the country. Uh, we are trying to go global with it. As I mentioned, we're in 55 countries. We, I don't think REACH is global yet, although it's definitely something that's being explored. Uh, we want to enhance the employee engagement and retention program. Uh, uh, obviously, you know, a happy employee is a longer serving employee, and we want to do our part there as well. And support, REACH supports the strategy and initiatives of the diversity for RBC as well. And I think I came in under the five minute warning. So that, uh, you know, I'm hoping that we'll have some great question and answers. That's basically my presentation today. And I want to thank you for your time. Thank you.